Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to set up Octane, which is a dynamic application framework for Blazor and then we're going to create a module and in that module we're going to use XPO to access the Octane database and you can also use it to connect to any of the data sources supported by XPO If you don't know what XPO is, uh, XPO is an o ORM or Object Relational Mapping Library um, that is by Developer Express it's a really nice framework because it's like really agnostic to the databases and it supports it support like 14 different type of databases um, and it's also free to use you can get the support for 399 but in general it's free to use if you don't need to put support ticket so if you want to learn more about Octane I'm going to um, to put these links in the description of the video so you can take a look there and also links to developer express and some examples that might be useful so let's start uh, when you go to the Octane page uh, let's go there in github um, you can download the current release this one so you go to the latest and then you just download the files the files that you will need actually will be this one, the source code because these other ones are like the runtime um, if you want to set up just the runtime but it's easier to do it with the source code so here I have that zip so let me create here one folder this will be XPO Octane XPO and let's open this here okay so in this folder we have the source code of Octane so let's open this and let's see what we have okay um, I'm not going to explain what each folder is or which each pro project is because it's not a part of this video in this case we're going to focus on our task that is creating a module and use XPO inside that module so so far here we have the source code and let's just run it the first time it's going to prompt us for some parameters for for setup so let's wait a little bit for the studio to load and compile and then run it's taking forever <laughs> sorry for that I think is that this is a virtual machine and I didn't set up um, enough CPU for it so that's why it's taking so long to compile it's usually like fast so okay let's run this the first time okay so we're going to use local db this is the server that we are using this will be the name of the database but I'm going to name this to XPO YouTube sorry I changed my keyboard to a Spanish keyboard because here you cannot buy keyboards in English I'm in El Salvador at the moment so I'm having trouble typing okay so will be integrity security the password of the user host will be super secure one to five and the email will be hoche beat frameworks.com ok so let's install this ok so here we have Octane running already so uh, I'm going to create a page let's log in
so add page this will be module creator because I'm, we're going to set up the module creator there to create a module so that's the only thing that I need so save so here we have that page module creator so let's go to the dashboard again and it will be add new module developer modules and module creator so this is the title of the instance that we're going to put here so this will be um, customer module I'm going to use plural for that and okay so the owner is um, basically like the company of the person that is creating this so I'm going to write bit for bit frameworks so the module name is going to be customers or customer maybe customer module description I will leave it as it is and then if I want to create an internal um, the template that I'm going to select is internal if I want to do it in the same solution that I'm running or external if what I want to do is do it in a separate solution so I will do it external which is the I think is the recommended approach but is sometimes it's easier to start with internal but let's go with external in this case so create module so the module um, for you to load the module you need to restart the application but let's go into close this and I'm going to go to the folder where I have the source and show you that if we go one level back now we have the name the module a folder for the module that we just created so this bit dot customer and we have a solution so let's open that so let's see what we have here let's build this so okay the first part that we're going to see here is how will I run this module on my Octane instance that will happen through this um, package uh, project so there are two commands here debug and release we're going to check the book just now so let's edit this open and as you can see basically copying all the output from the projects that I have here to the part where Octane is installed that's why when we open the file system uh, it basically creates one folder um, behind or back uh, the module in the same folder that Octane lives so that's why you need to set up a folder and then put the Octane source because at the same level of the source the other modules will be created if you use the external template so let's go back to the module so this is copying all the outputs from here to let me close this all other windows it's copying the output basically to here and to each folder where it's needed so that's how you communicate the new module with your instance of Octane so beside that um, we have the server uh, project and then we have the share project that here we have the data contracts that will go from the API um, to the client and in the client is basically all the services and the components that you will render so um, basically it's a client server architecture inside of the same app so let's see how we can include XPO on this because this is usually goes through Entity Framework so let's go to the repository here and this is the idea of how this works basically you, you have the iRep uh, customer repository so you can get a customer 
do basically the repository operations, the common one. Uh, get, update, add. And then you implement this on the customer repository here. So because this is using dependency injection, this will inject here the uh, context, a data context. So um, basically here you have to do the CRUD operations, or so basically all the operations that you implemented in your um, interface. So that's how you do the repository pattern, and you use dependency injection in general um, for this type of modules. You create the interface, you implement that, and then you use a service locator or something like that. So uh, that's how it works in general. So basically um, your repository will be hosted in a controller and this controller will basically do the same operations and the same operations will be called here from the client. So the client is communicating through HTTP, basically uh, an API. Uh, the, the client is communicating through the, to the server through this uh, controller. And what you're sending um, back and forward are the data that you have here in the models. Basically, that's the idea. So, so far we know that we're using Entity Framework, right? So, um, is that a customer context that we have here? Okay, so let's see where we have reference to this. So we only have them in the customer repository, basically. So, okay, um, the first thing that we need to do is to install XPO. So let's go to the solution level. And let's set up XPO. And we're going to put it in the server and in the share folder because we need to decorate the contracts. So we need it in both. And that's it. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to build instead of run. So let's do this. Okay, so we have XPO in both projects where we need it, so let's close all of this. And okay, what's the next step that we need to do? Basically, let's go to the server uh, project and then go to the customer context. This consumer, customer context, we don't need it actually, so let's forget about it for a while and then we need to go to the um basically let's see where we use this in the repository so we need it here um basically and then we will use that for the operation so this in xpo can be a unit of work or some type of helper that help you create a unit of works in general so that's what we're going to to do basically um so Let's see what else do we need to change. I guess we can start with that. So, okay, here we don't need um, the context, but we need also a way to access XPO. So if you've been using XPO for a while, you know that in a lot of their projects, they use something called the XPO helper. So the idea of the XPO helper is a class that helps you to set up the data layer in general and create you need of works so that is in, in many examples in the in the in the well in the github repository that developer express owns so from that we will get the xpo helper i don't want to write it so let me add here a new class
and I have the code here, so let's paste it. Now we're missing a lot of namespaces, so let's fix that. Okay, so basically here the idea is that I create the um, dictionary, I pass the data context that I need to do, I mean to use in general, and then I update the schema with that. And that's it. So basically you need to set the persistent classes or the types that you're going to use in order to check the schema. That is basically the the XPO normal flow and if you want to know about it you can go to XPO best practices and it's the number seven um, there you will, will see the code on how you should update the schema yep here is this code so I will put these links on the set of links Okay, so, so far what we have is the helper right, which uh, in general has this method that we're going to use, the create unit of work, and then everything else is to just update or check the status of the schema. So in here we need a, to pass a list of types. These types will represent the persistent object of our module. So where are those types in here? Um, you will find those types here in the contract so in the model sorry in the shared project so the idea of the customer is here so this is part of it looks like a more entity framework model but we can use it on XPO so for that let's comment this out inherit this from uh, you can use any XPO object um, base but since it looks like a POCO object, um, I'm going to use XP light. So it will be here. Um, Dev Express, XPO, XP or oh, light. Light object. Okay, so in this object, you know that you need to define the key, right? So this will be the key, customer ID. So, key, uh, and it will be auto-generated by the database, or that's what we want at least. So, XPO, and here auto-generated true. Okay, so far so good. So this is the type that we need to use um, in the helper. So let's copy the namespace, and here let's replace this with customer good so let's rename the helper class the file because now it's class number one good so now we have the helper class um, so we need to uh, check a moment where uh, this module is going to be set up or is going to be included on the application. So how you do that on Octane is basically you have this manager class and this manager class implements the I installable and the I portable. The I portable is to export and import data from the module, but the I installable is to basically do the setup process. Usually the setup process will include creating the tables on the database. So um basically here uh, um, in, uh, you have um, this is like uh, entity framework migrations so let's go and check that here you have it in the scripts this is a special folder where you have uh, you can get the this text with as a resource actually from this project so this uh, you get the connection to the database and then you can execute the script you pass it the tenant which is the current database or instance that you're using from Octane because Octane is multi-instance so you can run multiple tenants on the same instance 
of a database or multiple database and basically one database per instance. So uh, we don't need to do that because HPO doesn't work that way. Doesn't at least before the last year, uh, it didn't have the concept of migrations. Basically, you have the concept of updating the schema. So that's what what we're going to use. Um, now you can use something like um, migrations, but I have not used them in myself, so I will use the normal method of updating the schema. So here we need to return a bool if this code executes correctly. So what we're going to do here is just return true. And I know that I should not do this, but uh, um, XPO doesn't work like that. So let's comment this out. And here this will happen, I think, many times. It will pass the possible versions. And you have to decide what to do depending on the version. But in this case, we're not going to do it so complicated. So we know so far that we have the XPO class, um, the XPO helper class here. So in here, we need just the connection string to check the schema and make sure that we can connect to that database in general. So we're going to use this helper basically in the manager. So here we're going to use the helper and well, let's import the namespace. And let's do in it XPO and from where do we get the connection string you can get it from the tenant tenant uh, DB connection string okay so that will in it XPO and well if you want to do something on the uninstall here they are doing us uh, executing a script that basically drops the tables so we can forget about that for the moment so this table actually is not going to be named, not even like this. Um, so um, it's going to be customer at the moment. So, or maybe we can do the persistent from XPO. So we tell it that uh, it should be this name of table instead of this one. So that way the uninstall script will work um, somehow. So let's close this okay so here we have the repository now we don't have this instead of this we're going to delete this parameter and this is going to be a unit of work And we don't need this. Okay, so um, let's see what we have here. Um, basically, we need to figure out the tenant. So I think that we can use the tenant resolver here. when we need it so for when we need it so um, here we need to initialize XPO um, the helper so let's create a boolean um, this is because we're using the static class we should not use that in general but to make the example more simple um, then you replace it with the right pattern so here, here what we're going to use is we're going to create a method which is called get unit of work so here we're, go we're going to return a unit of work And let's import that namespace. And here, what we're going to do is check if this is initialized. 
then we're going to do XPO helper and uh, we're going to return a unit of work create unit of work So if it's initialized, we need to do that. No, let's change this. This will, will look really ugly. So let's do if it's not initialized. Um, this is Boolean. Then we will use the tenant resolver. Do we have something for this? No. Sorry, sometimes my keyboard is going crazy. Yeah, it's like super slow. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. demo effect. So this is bool. We just need to copy this if I can. Yeah, and now have this variable here. Okay, so um, Okay, my keyboard was not working, so I have to remove some part of the video. Um, now going back here, is that we need to return a unit of work, and we need to make sure that the data layer is initialized at least one time. So we can use the um, this the tenant resolver. So, if it's not initialized, let's init XPO, and we need the connection string, and for that we can use the tenant resolver, um, get tenant, and database connection string. Okay, so that's what we need. And here we need this. Okay, so we need to get a uh, unit of work. Um, now what we're going to do is um, replace all these calls, basically. So here we need to get unit of work, then query, customer, because it's a generic. And let's import the namespace. And let's see. What is happening here? So um, this is a method, so we need this. Okay. Now it's working. So here we need to return the customer. Um, now we need to find it. So for that, we will basically do the same. So in XPO, this will be first or default. Okay, so add customer. So when we're going to add the customer, 
Um, let's see what we need to do. Let me check my notes. Okay, so what we're going to do there is uh, we're going to create a new customer and use that model in general. So Okay, we need to make use of the namespace here. So here and here. So this customer and we don't have that constructor, so let's go and add it. We need this, this, or this. So, okay. So let's set customer, I think it's name equals this name. And that's it. And then we need to commit the changes. So we need to get the unit of work. out and okay so for update basically for update we need this Basically, we need this line. So, first we need to find it. So, bar you need of work. Then is this query? Okay, so we need to get it from the database and um, then we need to do something like this. But here, this is the customer, then we have the instance and the unit of work is different and this is also different. Okay, so we have the update method <laughs> and the last one. So the last one should be basically the same as this one. But here we're using the customer ID. Here. And we need to delete it. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> um, it looks like it's working. Uh, or at least the code <laughs> seems to be valid. So, I think that's basically it. 
so when I compile this, um, it's copying these DLLs to my instance of Octane, and let's see how this uh, is working at the moment. So let's compile this, and let's run this one time. Okay, so it's compiled, and it means, it means that at least my code is semi-valid. But what we're going to do is let's go to the the book command. Here, basically, you have the outputs of all these um, projects, and they are being copied to the Octane framework folder. So if you add some references you need to also copy the references and we added XPO so what we need to do is just copy two of these lines because if you see all of them are end up in the in the server in the same folder so we just need to copy um, two lines because we're, copy to, we're going to copy two DLLs so we need them from basically we can use th these two from the server so i'm going to put them here in the end and the dlls that we need are the xpo dlls so let's try to find them in server being the book net5 so let's open the folder And what we need is the Express, XPO, and the Express data. So this DLL. And this other DLL. Okay, and so far so good. Uh, let's rebuild this. Okay, so um, now we need to run it in the Octane instance. So, but before that, I'm going to show you the database. So this is the one that we're using. I think that we will not have a customer table. Yeah, we don't. And we don't have the XPO object types here also that is created by the XPO helper. So let's double check that XPO helper. Yeah, here is creating the object type record. So good so when we install this module um, xpo is going to update the database and it will create the xp um, sorry the customers table and it will also create the xpo object types here so let's go to the instance let's compile it and let's run it again okay so after i compile the module i execute obtain in the other uh, studio that I have open and basically um, we need to activate the module so let's go here to the page that we created and here it says that you need to activate the module so when we activate the module the install process will be executing so I think that if we put something here at the book point it will basically work so Let's come here and let's see what we have here. I think it will stop. <laughs> so activate module and activate. Yep, it's stopping. So let's see. Yeah, I think that um, there is a problem with with OBS and this virtual machine because it's like way slower well we cannot even do that debugging stuff here 
okay sorry um, here I have some code from from where I copy this from we don't need this anymore so let's come here let's, we need to go to the ok after I remove the code from the XPO class the XPO helper class, the code that we don't need anymore we need to compile again the module because that I did it in the Octane instance but this also on the other Visual Studio solution so let's double check that the changes that I did are here yeah they are um, Okay, let's just double check that the code that we need is here because I edited in the instance of of Octane, that Visual Studio, but uh, yeah, here are the changes that we did and uh, let's run this again. We need to compile this first and then go to Octane and execute that. Execute the module activated again. So obtain. Let's run this. And let's go check the databases. Oh, it's open in the other studio, I think. So refresh tables. Yeah, no cost. Oh, we have the customer table already. See. Okay, so let's check this again. Add customer. Uh, this will be XPO customer and save. Error. So let's check the errors. Okay, um, it looks like there's a problem with the um, with the XPO class. So let's go and double check that. Let me check on my notes if I did something there. Okay, so I had to double check my notes and I did some corrections. So basically, here in the customer type. I remove the base, it's not in height from XP light object anymore. We still have the decorations. And also in the repository. The add customer I change it. So we don't create an instance of the customer uh, object. Let's refresh this page. So what I what will happen here is that this is going to execute the repository and the repository is using XPO so with that basically we will have ended this concept I mean this prototype of using XPO in an Octane module so let me show you that let's create a customer this will be Jorge Ojeda and save and let's go to the database and let's refresh this 
See? Here you have it. Um, since we're not using the repository anymore, these uh, columns are not being filled because you, you need the repository looks for some interfaces, um, basically the iAuditable, and set that value for you. But since we're not using the repository anymore, uh, we're not using the context sorry, anymore, uh, those are not being filled. So you will have to do that here in the repository somehow. And basically that's it for this video. So I will publish the source. I will um, put all the links on the comments below. And if you have any doubt about Octane modules or using Octane with XPO, just let me know.